Hello and welcome. I'm sorry to say that poor old Chris, he's in, in Down Underland, New South Wales, and I knew he had a sore throat, but apparently since then he's developed a headache and terrible pain and he's been to hospital and he's got some painkillers. So although this is actually his morning, it's tomorrow morning where he lives, uh, seven o'clock in the morning, which is an ungodly hour. And that's why normally I would record with him earlier today and then play it back as the stream tonight. So we haven't done that because he's not well. And uh, it's not serious, uh, I understand. I don't think it's COVID because they've more or less eliminated it in that part of the world. And he, so what we've done is postponed him to uh, next week. So tune in next week and we'll do the program that we should be having tonight. So instead of doing archaeological evidence for the Bible with Chris, I thought we could have an audience participation event. We've got 2021 coming up and I'd like your advice on what subjects to cover and what guests, which guests to invite. So I'm going to ask for you to comment, to, to criticize, <laughs> to complain, <laughs> to suggest, and we'll, we'll have a little chat uh, for some of the time that we would have been covering this evening anyway. Now, I thought to start off with, I'll show you a little video that I made with Chris some months ago, because a lot of people ask why he styles himself the atheist pastor. That doesn't make sense, does it? So I'm going to show you this video where he explains. <laughs> viewers and welcome to the latest in my series of short interviews with interesting atheists. My latest victim is Chris Attlee, who describes himself as the atheist pastor and spends quite a lot of time haunting YouTube. Here he is. How the devil are you, Chris? I am absolutely fantastic. How about yourself, John? Yeah, I'm fine too, thanks. You've, you've had floods in Australia, I believe. We've had floods, we've had fires, we've had, um, well, obviously the uh, the pandemic that's going around. I'm just waiting for the locusts. And uh, and if, if that happens, then, you know, and all the frogs and everything, I may consider going back to religion. <laughs> well, it's where, we're, we're kind of at that point here in Australia. We, we, we've had a little bit of everything. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, better luck in the future is all I can say. Yes. <laughs> so... So I've, I've had an easy ride, really, because I didn't have the usual journey, you know, because luckily I chose my parents well. <laughs> they, they weren't religious. So we didn't go to church on a Sunday. We, had, we listened to the radio. <laughs> That's all there was in the, at the time. And uh, I didn't meet serious religion until I started to go to school because the law required a morning assembly on Christianity, uh, but it didn't make any impact on me because I didn't see it happening in my family group, you know? So hmm. I, I regarded it as something that other people do, but it wasn't for me. And then of course, when I got to secondary school, I fell in love with science, subsequently became a science teacher, and here I am now, retired and locked down <laughs> in my studio. And no looking back, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So what's your story? I know you've got an interesting one. Well, well funnily enough, um, I guess my origins are similar to yours. In I was raised in a, a non-religious family. Neither, well, no one in my family is actually religious. We, um, we always marked ourselves as either Church or England or Anglican, depending on what the terminology was at the time on the census. Um, and 
there would be the occasional trip to church. I think at, at one point when I was about 10, my mother decided that, no, we should go to church and it'll be really good. We went to church and um, I asked too many questions and we were asked not to come back or she was asked not to bring me back to the children's service. So that was my experience with uh, with religion. So I went through high school, no interest in it. But what I did develop was a, a keen interest in history. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm a historian um, now, funnily enough. So it's I'd always had that interest in, I guess, the mythology and things like that. But my view was always that religion was garbage. You know, I always had a bit of a spiritual kind of feel, I guess, but it was always religion was garbage. And I used to, you know, challenge people and their beliefs and, and things like that. And I remember challenging a, a friend of mine. At, he was at work and he was like the... You know how every every workplace has got the evangelist? He he was the evangelist in, in the workplace. And I challenged him on a few things, and he gave me the first ever honest answer I got from a Christian, which was, you know what, I don't know the answer. Um, my past is better on that. If you're not doing anything Sunday, come along to church and ask him. So I thought for a laugh I'd go along. Anyway, the next thing you know, I'm giving my life to Jesus somehow. I don't know <laughs> how that happened, although on reflection at the time I was in a bit of a place where I lacked community. I, I was... Uh, I was lonely. Um, yeah, it's my. I guess both of my parents had had remarried, and um, I, I didn't really have a, a place in the world. I think, and I had all these people embracing me, wanting to know who I was, and and I, I really got caught in that community. Anyway, that began a, a journey for me. That um, it's as you can probably tell, I, I don't mind talking. I, I can hold a conversation. So pretty quickly, I got earmarked as a. A, a, you know, a future pastor, you know, went through all the leadership programs. Um, I can also hold a tune. So um, they had me on the worship team leading worship and singing. And and I really sort of got caught up in in the whole community aspect of it. And, and for many years, I, I was on that path. Um, eventually got to the point where I decided to, all right, well, you know, we, we've had about seven or eight years where people are telling me I really should study it and really should become a pastor. So that's what I'm going to do. And actually went and did a, um, a Bachelor of Theology and a Bachelor of Ministry. Oh. Um, and it was while I was there that I actually started reading the Bible. And, and the funniest thing happened when I started reading the Bible. You'll never guess what. I know it was, it was, it was crazy, but there, it was, there was one class in particular and it, it stands out to me. Um, and it was a, an Old Testament class. And one thing I struggled with was because it, the people around me and were, were very much um, young earth creationist. And I, I'd never had a scientific brain, I guess, or I'd never really gotten into science too much. Um, mm -hmm. I knew that history probably disagreed with the young earth, but I didn't know enough about it. So I, I guess I was a little bit agnostic on it. Um, Anyway, we're talking about um, you know origins and Genesis, and and I actually asked the question: Well, how how would um, Genesis work in a in an old Earth or a, an evolution model? Because you know there's obviously there's arguments for evolution, and how would it work in in that model? Uh, and I got laughed at. I got laughed at by the the lecturer, and I got laughed at by the class. And and at that point, I thought. No one's here to learn. It, it dawned on me. No one's here to learn. Yeah. They're just here to be spoon fed yeah. exactly what they believe. Yeah. And it started me on a journey of, you know what, I'm going to look further into this. And the more I looked into it, um, I guess with an open open mind, the more I just realized, you know what, it, this is this is garbage. Um, it took me, so I, I ended up dropping out of um, I made an excuse to drop out of Bible college because, you know, at this point I'm married with children and, and as I'm becoming an atheist, the, the, the thing going through my head is, uh, and, you know, because we met at church, you know, and it was, you know, yeah, met and got married four months later and, you know, tried to do everything right and, you know, with a perfect Christian couple and, you know, in leadership over, you know, and running groups and, you know, doing all this this kind of stuff. So, um my biggest concern for a long time was what's going to, how's my wife going to react? Is this going to end my marriage? You know, what, what about my kids? How, how do I have those conversations? And, mm -hmm. and funnily enough, it was over a few glasses of wine one night and I finally <laughs> got the courage to say to my wife, look, I need to talk to you. I, I don't want to go to church this weekend. I'm having issues and struggles with it. And she said, okay, let's talk about this. We, we spoke about it. And, 
ironically, I found out that she'd been having similar issues and similar struggles and had similar concerns. So had we have spoken to each other a year or so earlier, um, we probably could have saved ourselves, you know, 10% of our wage for the year um, in tithes and, um, and you know, and, and gotten our Sundays back. So that was that was how I guess I be, I guess became an atheist. Um, so that was the first step, and then the next step was actually having to leave the community. Um, oh. How that happened was we had a, a same sex marriage vote in in Australia, um, and I'd been someone because I, I I'd been involved politically. Um, well, I, you know I, I do have um, you know, I, I am someone who is political. Um, oh. And what had happened was I'd been involved politically with um, you know, Christian organisations, and uh, yeah, so I've I've done a complete one eighty here. Like I, I can't emphasize this enough. Yep. Can I put in a me too hash me too here for political? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's an it's an addictive problem, isn't it? That political stuff, but yeah. um, it's um, yeah. So I I ended up um, when this um, same sex marriage vote came out. I, look, I had no issue with it. It's not not something I was overly active in campaigning for, um, but I did put out that I'd voted yes for same-sex marriage. Uh, we'd moved area um, not too long before, so a lot of the people from the church community, they knew I'd moved. They didn't realise that I'd stopped going to a church altogether. Yeah. So yeah. it was kind of I then had to put out, you know what, I don't believe anymore. And what I found was instantly... Um, there was one of three things happened with people I knew. The majority, that was it. They they just were not talking to me. Yeah. Um, I had a few who are still my how friends very, regardless. How very Christian of them. It, it is extremely Christian of them. Um, and then I had the other ones who have spent the last few years trying to reconvert me because, you know, to get the pastor back, well, isn't that oh. a scalp? Um, you know, it's uh, and, and sorry, when I say pastor, I was never ordained, um, but, you know, I, I preached at churches, you know, I was in leadership. Um, I just hadn't gone through and, and ticked off the, you know, the the degree basically to to become the, the paid one. So, and that's part of the reason I use the, the handle Atheist Pastor because uh, one of the things that I had, all the, all the Christian prophets had prophesied over me that I was going to be a pastor and I didn't want to let them down. So I just became the Atheist Pastor instead. So, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> which, uh, that's, and that's where I am here. Like it, what you said about um, there's always an evangelical person in the community or in, in your workplace mm. reminds mm -hmm. me of, of one of our RE teachers many years ago when I was teaching in a big school. And he was keen to become a pastor. So he used to go and preach at, the, at his local church. And then mm. on the Monday in the staff room, he'd come and tell us that he, he'd brought Okay. Taught, preach, pro. Oh, that's a uh, that's a, an interesting play on word. I haven't heard that one before, but um, I guess if it worked for him, <laughs> I, I hope that that didn't then lead him to telling everyone about. Uh, so here's what I preached about, and and then trying to basically get a sermon in in the staff room. No, but, no, uh, no, I, well, I I lost touch with him decades ago because we all moved yeah. schools and, and taught somewhere yeah. else. But <clears throat> he introduced me to the word prot. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't say. I, I can't say. I heard that one, but um, the Christian me would probably use that if uh, if I knew of it. So it's probably good that you told me now rather than a few years back. <laughs> You'd be wearing it out, wouldn't you? Oh, so, I can guarantee it. So now that you've become an atheist, mm -hmm. what is it? What do you think atheism is? You know what? That's a really interesting question, and and you see a lot of argument for it. For for me, being an atheist is actively not believing that a god exists, um, or taking the belief position, I guess, that there is no gods. Um, that's what it is for me. I know that um, for a lot of people, they just say it's simply a lack of belief. Um, that's not the definition I'd use, but I'm also my attitude is, you know what? I'm not going to tell people who or what they are no no indeed they can mm. tell us we can ask them what they are can't we yeah, yeah. look if, if someone if someone wants to tell me that they're a, a you know a, a giant purple people eater well i'm not going to argue it with them but i'm probably not going to think that that's what they are no 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 we can all describe mm. ourselves how we like but Absolutely, there is yeah. there is such a tendency to straw man 
everyone, isn't there, to to decide that on the part of theists, mm. many theists mm. decide that you're labelled as a god hater or a purposeless or um, immoral. Oh yes. Oh, look, uh, immoral. The, the the two main ones that I got from people was, um, well, you just want to sin. Mm. You know, the, the whole moral yeah. thing. And, and look, when when you look at the rules in the Bible, I mean, the rules in the Bible. Are, uh, if, if I've got the option between, you know, sinning and not sinning, yeah. I mean, the, the first four commandments are all about, you know, how you need to worship and love God. So if, if we're going off that, hell yeah, I'm, I'm call me a sinner all, all day, every day. Um, and, and, and look, I, I mean, realistically, it's that the moral system that's set up in the Bible was something that was written two and a half thousand years ago by Babylonian exiles um, who were trying to enforce nationalistic ideas, nationalistic rules, and give control to the the prophets and the, um, I guess, the, the writers of the Bible, you know, to basically swing the rules to, to make sure that, you know, the right people were in charge. So yeah. you, you've got to look at it within that context. Um, and certainly the, the other thing I got was that I must hate God. And I had to say to people, no, I don't hate God. I, I don't believe there is a God. If if there was a God, having read the Bible, yeah, I'd probably take issue with him and and I don't think I'd be worshipping him. Um, but no, I don't hate God any more than, and I know it's cliche, but any more than I hate Voldemort or, or you know, Emperor or they, Palpatine. It's, or they hate Zeus. Yes. Exactly. You, you, you know, it's, and, and I love using Zeus as, as the example whenever I have these conversations or Thor because they go, well, that's just ridiculous. I go, well, why? Yeah. Yes, why? Yes. Why? The, the the story the stories about Zeus are older than the stories about Yahweh. So yes. let's talk about that. Listen, Chris, I'm thoroughly enjoying this, but we're coming up to the end of our time. And what I, think I do tend to talk. Do, <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed you're a motor mouth. <laughs> I am. I am. It's uh, it's helped me in politics and, uh, and, yeah. and 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 life in general. Yes, yes. So what I suggest we do is bring this interview to an end, but. Mm -hmm. schedule a talk where we get together and discuss for example the commandments would you be able oh, to like that yeah. absolutely absolutely Ooh. we can we can certainly do that it's uh, i may as well put my uh my, my theological knowledge you know to use for good yes yes absolutely mm. well one way we could do this would be for you to come on my skeptics in the hub show as a guest mm -hmm. absolutely i'd love to uh, Great. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll send you some proposed dates and you can choose when you might like to appear. Right. Thank now, you. my final question in this interview mm -hmm. is, if I could give you a magic wand with atheist mm -hmm. powers, what would you wish for? Well, as a skeptic, I'd be questioning the, uh, the wand. However, <laughs> for, the, uh, for the sake of the argument, um, look, the, the big thing for me is the separation of government and religion um, globally. I think that that's, that's something that, that needs to happen. Um, you know, I think churches should be treated like any other business. They should be taxed. Um, but essentially, we, we need to have a complete secular world. So if we can have a secular world, um, I'm, I'm a happy man. And, and if people want to be religious, let them. Good luck. Believe what you want. But well, don't, right. use, don't, don't use that to enforce laws upon the rest of us. No, indeed. It would be like astrologers deciding how we should behave, and they get taxed. <laughs> yes, well, well, hey, don't laugh. That has happened before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm going to let you take the rest of the day off. I know you've got a glass of wine ready there to relax. Certainly into. do. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good Australian red. You can't beat it. I know. This is, we get it over here. It's fantastic, isn't it? Yep. Ah, it is. It's very fruity because of all the sun. Oh and rain and fires and <laughs> brimstone <laughs> and everything you, you're going to get some interesting flavors so it's a so look if, if the locusts come that's going to be the end of the wine i'm converting back to christianity that, that'll do me <laughs> on that note bye bye <laughs> <laughs> catch you all later <laughs> he's a lovely fellow isn't he, he interviews very well but yes that's uh, atheist alliance international is the organization that I work for and uh, this is what I do for fun <laughs> how weird is that <clears throat> anyway um, 
if you've got any suggestions, we would like to hear them. And yes, Chris, we would like you to get well soon. So Paul says we don't see the video, and I don't know why that would happen. Oh, what a shame. So you didn't see it. Ah, it was very good. <laughs> I can tell you how good it was. Now, I don't know why that happened. So you just got a blank piece of screen there, did you? Oh, damnations. Look, this has been a learning curve for me. I've, I've been trying to learn how to do this software <laughs> since March. And the other thing I was going to do to, to show you, to give some su suggestions as to what we might um, do in 2021, I was going to show you the, the YouTube channel. So let me put that up. These are the YouTubes, that, uh, the channels, the shows <laughs> that we've done since March. Uh, you, you, we've had one a week, uh, ever such a lot. And you can see that um, we've covered all sorts of subjects. There's veganism. I had to learn not to say veganism. And there's pandemics. And there's logic. Uh, this one is, um, uh, what is that? Evolutionary. No, 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 that's archaeology. Many of these, if you go to the archive, you'll see that there's two versions. And that's because very often the live show has glitches in it. So I edit it and put up a clean version the following day. If I was you, I'd watch the clean version if you, if you want to go back into some of our previous programs. Let's have a look. Let's, let's put this banner up first of all. And so that anybody who's just tuned in can see what's going on that's the reason we're not doing chris atley on archaeological evidence for the bible you you can watch the previous one because we the program split into two halves part one is on the archive and that what we were, what we were doing is taking down a presentation by an answers in genesis pastor who has prepared this presentation and delivered it to quite a large audience uh, on what he calls the archaeological evidence for the bible and we were pointing out how it wasn't <laughs> archaeology is terrific science but it can't provide evidence for events like raising from the dead or being born of a virgin or walking on water any of none of the miracles leave recordable traces that archaeologists can come and dig up so what we are hoping that some of you might do is make some suggestions as to what we should do in 2021 as you can see, we've got lots of subjects that we've already covered. Transhumanism, nuclear power, complementary and alternative medicine, artificial intelligence. We've been <clears throat> all over the place. We've had AC Grayling. We've had uh, Lawrence Krauss. We've had Stephen Law. We've had a lot of very interesting and very academic people. We delved into politics. We had a, an ex-MEP analyze the United States uh, election, presidential election. And we've had numerous professors. A recent one was Nicola Clayton on comparative cognition. And uh, I want to tell you that the week after next, as you, as you know, we've postponed Chris to next week, but the week after next, we have another uh, neuroscientist coming from University College London to tell us about uh, the brain studies of infants. She's looking into, she's using some, one of the imaging technologies to investigate the brains of the very, very young. That's going to be wonderfully interesting. 
So I can tell you that's going to happen on December the 16th. So let, let's get on with the, the discussion about how and where and why and what we're going to do with 2021. It's going to be a much better year than 2020. It couldn't be worse, could it? So we need to line up some preferred speakers, preferred topics, and schedule a couple of weeks ahead, maybe more, a couple of months ahead. But let me tell you, it's not easy. Getting speakers is a bit like casting a big net and hoping to catch maybe one, maybe two fish. A lot of them don't even respond. Some of them respond and say they're very busy and can you get back to me next year? And others respond and say, uh, I wouldn't possibly waste my time <laughs> on that sort of thing, or words to that effect. So I, I'm, I, I think I'm pretty lucky to have got the quality of academics that I've had so far. So I'm just asking you to, let's start by looking at topics. We've got one suggestion here, which is sustainability, uh, UK sustainability and self-sufficiency. Well, we had a, uh, an expert on um, <clears throat> conservation, no, not conservation, climate change come to speak to us some time ago, but uh, you're looking to go forward with that and maybe take into account the new rules for farming, you know? Suddenly, after having grubbed up all the hedges, we've got to put them back. And so that's, that's 50 years wasted, and now we've got to wait another 30 for them to mature. <clears throat> so we could, we could do that. I'm sure I could look at trying to get somebody to cover that field. Oh, field. <laughs> Forget and do we have an online list of potential guests? No, we don't at the moment. But if anybody would like to compile one, that would be wonderful. I'm open to all sorts of suggestions. This is not me being a boss. I'm just facilitating opportunities for you. And uh, Paul would like to come on the show. Well, that's, that's fine. That's very kind, Paul. Maybe we will do a group event where we can have up to 10 people on the same screen and because paul's keen specialism is arguing with christians well okay my day job is promoting a secular world for atheist alliance international but i don't want skeptics in the hub to become specifically anti-religious I'm an ex-science teacher. I want to learn about science. It's, it's great fun. Or philosophy. Or sociology. It, it, if, you're, if you've been a teacher, you want to learn. It, you know, it's the other side of education. You couldn't possibly be a teacher and not want to learn. And I still want to learn even at my great age. So it's a privilege for me to get to have conversations with people like Professor Mike Benton on, what was it, the Carnian, Plutna, the Carnian Pluvial Extinction. Fantastic hour I spent with him. Or Sophie Scott on neuroscience. Or, well, you name it. We've had a wonderful series of interesting hours. So, please, I don't mind doing a bit of anti-religion occasionally, and that's when I double it up with the Atheist Alliance channel. But I don't want it to be all that. It gets boring. You know, that, that's the reason why skeptics is much more fun than humanism. <laughs> humanism can only deal with religion, seemingly, whereas skeptics, big, wide opportunity. So, you tell me, Ken G. Who's Ken G? And I'm afraid Facebook user, you haven't come up with your name. Is, who, let me guess. Is that um, Steve? No? 
is that Terry, maybe, um, you tell me who you are, Facebook user. Ken G, Nick Wan. I don't know these people, but I certainly write them down and search for them. Somebody I've been trying to get, or an expert I've been trying to get, is an economist. Do you understand the econo economics? I don't. What is the economy? Is it all the transactions that go on within the nation? Is it us trading within ourselves? Or is it our relationship with other economies? I want an economist. I can't get one at the moment. Please suggest. Hello, Daniel. Nice to meet you. Terry's nephew. Great. Say hello to Terry for me. He's a terrific fellow. So I'm writing this down. Ken G, data scientist. Thank you. Uh, Nick Wan. Um, what's he do, Nick? I mean, Daniel. What's Nick's expertise? All uh, right. Conspiracy theories. You want to come and talk about conspiracy theories, Paul? Sure. Yep. The um, the aliens. Yeah, I like it. Um, we we definitely do a full act on that. Are you going to prepare a presentation? Are you going to prepare a PowerPoint, or I prefer Keynote, but PowerPoint presentation on conspiracy theories or aliens. Are you going to do that? And then we'll talk about it. If you would, that would be fantastic. About 15 slides, otherwise it goes on too long. 15 slides take about 20 to 30 minutes. Excellent. Yeah, tell Nick. He's another data scientist. Right. Yes, please. Tell Nick. Invite him to appear on Skeptics Club. Tell him that, you know, you can see on the archive all the fantastic people we've had. And unfortunately, it looks on the archive as though we don't get a very big audience. But that's only a partial picture because, of course, when we go live, we're on several platforms. And they don't all add up and report back to the archive channel. So we get more than that, more than it appears. Right, so Nick Wan is in neuroscience. Yeah, this is one of the cutting edge areas, isn't it? That's why I'm so pleased that we've got, let me think of her name, um, Addison, uh, what's her other name? Hmm. I'd have to go to, where did I meet her? On Twitter, I think. I'll go to Twitter and have a look. Addison Billing. Yes, uh, she's December the 16th. Then I'm thinking for the rest of December and over the holiday period, we might take a break. What do you think? Either that or we could do a best of. We could re-show some of the previous shows and talk about them. Uh, a watch party. If you like that idea, then let me know. Some of them you may have missed, and some of them you may want to see again. So, thanks, Daniel. Here's me in the comment bank. Right, okay, well, we're coming up to the end of an hour. It's not been, <laughs> it's not been plain sailing, has it? Uh, one day I may understand this software. But um, I have been getting better. <laughs> Difficult to imagine, I know. So thanks a lot, everybody. I'm going to stop the ticker. That's one thing I have to learn to do. And I'm going to play the outro. 
I think you've been fantastic. Are you bothering to hang around <laughs> since Chris was off sick? Thanks a lot. Come again next week. He'll really be here then. <laughs> Bye-bye.